Hi, I'm Neil Paris from Central Wing Chun and this is Wing Chun Basics Lesson 1. The idea behind this series of videos is to show you how you can train at home using no equipment, just the environment around you and some everyday items we find in the house. Today we're going to start off with the turning stance, Jun Ma. Let's take a look. <laughs> So the purpose of the Jun Ma is to change the angle of your hips relative to your opponent. As you can see, I'm pivoting on my heels and that's changing my angle each time. What that enables me to do is to redirect force that's coming towards me and to direct my own weapons towards the opponent as well using this small rotation. What it does is it puts my whole body behind the attack. And remember, Jun Ma is a turning stance. This is when we're close. Okay, so if I'm close here, it enables me to get a little bit more momentum to put my structure into the attack. Whether I'm doing a elbow, chop, punch, you always put your body into the weapon, all right? So now I'm gonna show you how you can practice your Jun Ma using a 90 degree wall, okay? Using this corner. So what I'm gonna start off by lining this edge up to my spine. And throughout the movement, this must stay in line with my spine. No swaying left to right. From that position, I can then do my Jun Ma and my hips should now be running parallel to this wall. That's 45 degree turn. When I turn to my left, the same. My hips run in parallel now to this wall and that gives me my 45 degree turn. Remember, we're using any 90 degree angle you've got in your home. It could be a corner like this. It could be even a kitchen table or something, right? But you're gonna turn, so you run parallel with one side and the other. And remember the important detail, make sure your spine stays in line with the corner. So here's a closer look at what should be going on with your feet when you're doing the turning stance. First of all, your heels should stay still. You want to pivot from that point. And what that gives you is a turning arc, something like this, all right? Where you're moving left to right, left to right. And both feet move simultaneously when you're doing it. When you turn like that, keeping this, the heel still, that rotates the spine on its axis. And then that in turn changes the angle of your hips, okay? And as I say, it's done simultaneously. Also, if you were to raise your heels off the ground, then you're gonna raise your spine, you're gonna raise your whole body mass. And basically that makes you, from a certain perspective, lighter to your opponent, easier to destabilize, easier to move. And we're talking about close quarters tall, Jun Ma. So you definitely don't want to become easier to destabilize and move. So we keep the heels down and we just pivot the front portion of the foot. So just briefly to go over that again, we pivot from the heel, which gives us this turn and arc left to right, simultaneously on both feet. That rotates the spine, which then in turn changes the angle of your hips. Right, so with all of that in mind, how do we now make it real? Do we always just move 45 degrees like a robot? I hope not, okay, because you're gonna get hurt, all right? We have to have an understanding which relates to the opponent. So if we're talking defensively, when pressure comes in, if you get something in the way of their, their, their punch, for example, right? Then that has the potential to destabilize you. There's pressure going against you, right? So what we do instead is we use their force to some degree against them, we rotate. There's that rotation of the spine, there's that stability of the heels. Okay, there's that turning of the hips. And we do that just to a point where it's no longer pressuring your, your, your structure. And at that point you stop turning, you don't need it anymore. And you start pursuing your own line of attack. So what we're looking at in Jun Ma is a sensitivity linked action, defensively speaking. Okay, and that's important that we recognize that, that there's degrees of turn and they'll change. When I'm saying do 45 degrees, it's for practice so you can understand the sort of mechanics of the movement. But you then need to apply that at varied degrees, depending on the pressure that you're encountering. Okay, so just to wrap things up a little bit, we're gonna now introduce the bong cell so you can get some coordination between your upper and lower body. We're still gonna use this edge as a marker, but now we're gonna line our elbow and wu cell, guard hand, up to that edge from our perspective. Now when you do the bomb, your elbow is basically moving from this low position, where it's in line with your hips, to this position out here, where it should be in line with your shoulder, okay? The bomb has no business 
going out into this territory here. Anything approaching you there is dealt with with another tool of some description. So our bomb moves as it, once again from the hip to the shoulder. And what we do is we make that transition from hip to shoulder while turning so our elbow now lines up to this edge. Okay, it's a really small movement and it's actually gonna be less than your 45 degrees. Okay, so we've now got our bomb using this edge as a guide for where to stop ourselves, all right? We're lining the elbow up, we're lining our wusa up. Our bong is only traveling a short distance, it's staying within our framework, and when we stop with our elbow in line, it's reducing the rotation. So we're no longer going to fall 45 degrees. We're turning smaller. This hand should be in line with the, with the corner, but it should also be quite close to the body. Don't chase your own arm with it. So we've got this turn. And we've got this turn, which gives us the 445, the big, bigger version, but it teaches you the basic mechanics of the Junma using your environment to help you train. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe. We've got more coming. Thank you.